the gospel of transfiguration the gospel of transfiguration is a is a prefiguration of the lord who is going to come again that transfigured appearance that transfigured that is the truth of jesus he is the true jesus but in the earthly time when he was in the earth he was camouflaged he was covered with the human nature inside the human nature the true lord is that transfigured lord and that is a very great but in a very short time he just shown how will be the second coming so at the second coming like moses and elijah came with glory we all will also come with glory can you believe this and in the holy eucharist in the holy kurbana that is the very sorry that is the mystery of the eastern liturgy that is siro malabar liturgy so in the catholic church we know catholic church but very many people do not know in the church in the catholic church there are 23 eastern churches the liturgy of eastern churches is exactly giving the focus on the transfiguration and the second coming the resurrection and then our commitment our life everything will be different everything will be different now a word coming saint paul's teaching in colossian chapter 3 in colossian chapter 3 saint paul teaches us that you are from heaven you are already united with the risen lord so colossians 3:3 for you have died <laughs> and your life is hidden with Christ in God when Christ your life appears then you too will appear with him in glory now uh, word one on which if you are raised with Christ seek what is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God Colossians chapter 1 1 if then you are raised with Christ we are risen people we are transfigured people we are people who is who are united with the Lord in his resurrection and the transfiguration so in the byzantine liturgy <laughs> morning i was singing that one antiphon is like this christ is risen from the dead 
By death he conquered death. By death he conquered death. And to those in the graves he granted life. Christ is risen from the dead. By death he conquered death. And to those in the graves he granted life. So our whole life must be hinged, hinged to the transfigured Christ. To the risen Lord. So that is why, give me that one book. Oh. Kurvana Pustotra. During the prayer of Holy Communion, we pray He Prabhu Tune Hama Tune Apne Puneridhan Ke Dwara मृत्यु पर विजय पाई शैतान को पराजित किया और सारी सृष्टियों को किसको सारी सृष्टियों को नवजीवन दिया तूने हमारी परिपोषण के लिए अपना शरीर रक्त भोजन के रूप में दिया तेरी करुणा के योग्य कृतज्ञता प्रकट करने के लिए हमारे जीव असत्य है सो हियर ए भोजन दिस इज द दिस 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 बॉडी एंड ब्लड is the risen, transfigured body and blood. That's why St. Augustine says, a Christian become what he eats. What he eats. He is transfigured by what he eats. What is he eating? He eating the risen, Transfigured second coming Christ. So what he will become? A Christian will become what he eats. That's why St. Paul says, do not be conformed to the standards of this world. It is so true. Our life is hidden with Christ. Which Christ? The risen Christ. Hidden. It is beyond our human understanding. Now, this, if you practically if you practically live this, then only our priestly life and religious life will be with full commitment, arpan, consecration. You are consecrated people in the sense, it is not our action of consecration. Christ consecrated himself for us and risen for us and the risen life is in us. So, here, Pope John Paul II, in his Apostolic letter, Apostolic letter, Orientale Lumen. In Orientale Lumen, this is what every day I am teaching, in which he wrote like this. O 
only in a progressive purification of the knowledge of communion will man and god meet man and god meet and recognize an eternal embrace an eternal embrace their unending connaturality connaturality c o n n a t u r a l i t y connaturality of love man and god from the origin connaturality means from the by natural by birth we are united <laughs> connaturally in love and that is unending there is no end and it leads us to a eternal embrace that is the holy communion an eternal embrace and he says in a humble acceptance of the creature's limits before the infinite transcendence of a god who never ceases to reveal himself as god love god is love and that god love is penetrated into our whole being every molecule of our body mind and soul is permeated with the risen lord let us praise god praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah 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 everybody hallelujah 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 yes now with this uh, understanding of or the earlier session about the prayer prayer jesus himself after sending 70 to others jesus himself in that house of martha and mary pray so chapter 9 at the end no occasion no commitment nobody is coming even jesus personally called so he began a prayer apostolate he sent the prayer warriors 72 in groups of two and began a prayer apostolate and end of chapter 10 he himself is sitting in the house of martha and mary where jesus was revealing what is needed is one thing and mary has chosen the better part chapter 10 then chapter 11 chapter 11 this is the beauty of luke's gospel luke's gospel is a gospel according to jesus' priestly ministry priestly that's why the symbol of four gospels matthew is a winged man that is the humanity of jesus mark is a winged lion that is the divinity and kingly nature of jesus luke is a winged ox winged ox that is a, a ox who is a sacrificial animal that is the priestly life of jesus 
the priestly ministry of jesus is i have come to serve not to be served so that is why the symbol of luke's gospel is a winged ox and john's gospel is eagle naturally with the wing he is the revelation resurrection and everything not from earth not from earth <laughs> all these three animals are in the earth but john is above the earth so a priest or all of us who are in a priestly ministry we have to understand we are serving serving and jesus himself said i have come to serve this must be our attitude and also prayer jesus is the high priest priestly ministry of jesus so again said agustin summarizes in paragraph 2616 in catechism <laughs> see it is a wonder as soon as i open exactly that text is in front of me 2616 write down this number catechism saint agustin wonderfully summarizes the three dimensions of jesus as prayer jesus is praying for us he prays for us as priest he prays in us as the head of the church he listen to our prayer as god therefore let us acknowledge our voice in him and his in us so now i request you we will have a session now making an intercessory prayer session so now our groups the same groups you can join and some of the priests who are come today you can join in one of the groups and each one of you can join in any group and then we make a type of intercession the type of intercession what we are going to do is jesus is praying for us that's the point holy spirit is praying for us so you first you together pray for holy spirit and ask for a inspiration what should we pray for evangelization of this diocese what is the burden of the lord for the evangelization of this diocese and each one of you will get a inspiration i feel we have to pray for this area so each of you share that then together you pray and how you have to pray all that at that time holy spirit will lead you you can also use you can also ask the lord to give a word and during this time even the charisms will operate you will see vision suppose you will see a vision a dark cloud in the area of country a part but as you are praying the cloud is disappearing brightness is coming so various ways the charisms will operate okay jesus is praying holy spirit is praying of course mother mary and all the saints are praying and we are praying with them for the diocese for the evangelization of the diocese please move into the group now as you join in the group you make a little prayer on inviting holy spirit and then you carry out this way <laughs> 